All right, today we're going to do some limit practice. All of these limits are from exams I found from universities online. We only have about five of these, so hopefully this won't take too long. And there are some tricky things you've never done before, so hopefully you'll learn something important. Okay, so to start off with, we're going to take the limit as h goes to zero of the absolute value of h over h. So the first thing is, what is an absolute value? Well, the absolute value is positive if the value of x is greater than or equal to zero, and it's negative if our value of x is less than zero. So we need to take two limits, one from the right and one from the left, as we know. So the limit as h goes to zero from the right is going to be equal to h over h, which is equal to one. And the limit as h goes to zero from the left will then be equal to negative h over h, which is equal to negative one. And because these are different, we know that the limit does not exist. So this is a very simple question. Now we'll move on to something, ah, this is still pretty simple, I'd say. This is just testing your knowledge of something we learned a few videos ago. The limit as x goes to infinity of x plus 2 over 9x squared plus 1. So right away, you should be able to see that this is 0. Why? Because the leading term on the top, x to the 1, is smaller than x to the 2 on the bottom. Therefore, the top increases slower than the bottom, so it comes out to roughly 0. Now, if you don't know how to do it this way, you can divide the top and bottom all by x squared. So you'd get the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x plus 2 over x squared, all divided by 9 plus 1 over x squared. These terms would all go to 0, so you would be left with 0 over 9, which is just equal to 0. So two ways you can solve that question. Again, those two are easy just to knock them out of the way. Now we're going to jump into something a lot harder. So we want to make this function continuous. So f of x is equal to c squared x squared minus 3x minus 1 when x is less than 1. And it's equal to 3c times the cosine of x minus 1 when x is greater than or equal to 1. And we want to find values of c so that f of x is continuous everywhere. So what we want to check is, well, when x is less than 1, is this function continuous? Well, yes, it is, because it's a polynomial. What about when it's greater than 1? Well, this is a constant. Constants are always continuous, and so are trig functions. So both of them are continuous everywhere except for at 1. So. What do we have here? We, we need to know that the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of our function is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of our function. And of course, this should also equal to the, the value at 1 of the function. So when we evaluate it at 1, it should come out to the same thing as the limit from the right and the left. So we're going to check out these limits and just see what they are right now. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the right is 3c times the cosine of x minus 1. Okay, so we want to find the limit of this from the right. So let's plug 1 into our function. So we get 3c times cosine of 0, which we know cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So this comes out to 3 times c. Okay, and the limit as x approaches 1 from the left we're looking at the function c squared x squared minus 3x minus 1. Okay, so let's plug 1 in there. So we get c squared minus 3 minus 1, which is equal to c squared minus 4. So we know that these two things have to be equal. So what that means is that we need 3c to equal c squared minus 4. So now we can bring 3c over to the other side, 
and we can do some simple factoring to get, uh, this looks like C minus four, C plus one. Therefore, our values of C are four and negative one. So now when we plug in our limits with either four or negative one as C, we will get them equal to each other and F of one, well, we can evaluate F of one just to make sure it's the same, well, this is going to be the same as the limit coming from the right, since this is less than or equal to 1. So this function is con now continuous at uh, x equals 1, and it's continuous everywhere else. So we have done our job. Again, that question's tricky. It's a very good exam question because it takes your knowledge of continuity as well as some nice pre-calculus skills with algebra. So we've done a question like this before. I'll just do it again. We have the y equals 9 minus 2x squared, and we're given a point 0.21, and we want to find the equation of the tangent line. So this is a good question because there's multiple steps. It's a good limit test. It's, it's, just, it's just a very nice question to do, so we'll run through it. So first, we're always going to find the slope. So We'll take the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x minus f of 2 over x minus 2. Okay, so let's sub some things in here. The limit as x approaches 2, well, f of x is 9 minus 2x squared. f of 2, if we plug 2 into x squared, that's 9 minus 2 times 4, which is 9 minus 8, which is equal to 1. So we subtract 1 over x minus 2. Uh, we can do some simplifying here. So this is 8 minus 2x squared over x minus 2. Uh, hmm. Let's factor out a negative 2 from the top so we get an x squared minus 4 on top, which we know how to deal with much better than anything else here. So again, we can factor out the top here. So we have minus 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. Again, make sure your factoring skills are intact. Do a lot of problems because quick factoring makes these questions a lot easier. So those two cancel on the top. So now we get the limit as x approaches 2 of negative 2 times x plus 2. We sub in a 2 in our x, so we get negative 2 times 4, which is equal to negative 8. So we now know that our slope is negative 8, so we get y is equal to negative 8x plus b. Now all we need to do is find out b. Well, we were given a point 0.21, so we can plug some numbers in here. 1 is equal to negative 8 times 2 plus b, so 1 is equal to negative 16 plus b, therefore b is equal to 17. Again, I'm doing this algebra pretty quick, but you should really be checking your answers with these videos, not learning how to do this stuff because this is limit review. So y is going to be equal to negative 8x plus 17. And this is the equation of the tangent line. So hopefully you got that correct. If not, you might want to check out one of the previous videos on tangent lines and learn this technique, because this is a, another very good exam question. In fact, I'm going to show you one more question here. It's going to be the last one that is just phenomenal for exams because it's a question that could take a lot of time. But if you know a strategy and you understand the concepts, it's going to be much faster. So we have a function f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x. And what we want to know is we want to find f prime of 2, f prime of 3, and f prime of 4. Now, what you're thinking is, well, we know... <coughs> here's, here's what we know. We know that f prime of 2 is equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x minus f of 2 all over x minus 2. And if we want to do 3, then we sub in the number 3, and then we do it all over again, and it is 
a hell of a lot of work to do this three times. So what we'll do is we'll just find a general function, f prime of x, and then we'll plug in our values afterwards. So uh, this is good because this uses another definition of limits. So f prime of x is going to be equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So let's start plugging some things in here. Well, f of x plus h, we just plug in x plus h where all of our x's are. So we get x plus h squared minus 2 times x plus h minus f of x, so minus x squared plus 2x all over h. So here we're just going to do some expanding. So the limit is x as h goes to 0 of, well, x plus h squared is going to be x squared plus 2hx plus h squared by expanding that. Uh, we have minus 2x minus 2h by distributing here. Minus x squared plus 2x all over h. We're going to do some crazy canceling here. Okay. x squared here minus x squared here. Those cancel. Uh, we have a minus 2x and a plus 2x. And okay, that looks perfect. Everything is canceled that we can get to cancel. So now we have the limit as h goes to 0 of h squared plus 2hx minus 2h all over h. This is a perfect point because now we can cancel out a bunch of h's. Awesome. So now what we get is the limit as h goes to 0 of h plus 2x minus 2. And at this point, when we plug h equals 0 in, this just goes to 0. So then we get our answer, 2x minus 2. So that is our derivative of f of x. So we can write that f prime of x is equal to 2x minus 2. So now we find f prime of 2. Well, we can just plug these in. This will be easier. So 2 times 2 is 4 minus 2 is 2. f prime of 3 is 2 times 3 is 6 minus 2 is 4. And f prime of 4 is 2 times 4. That's 8 minus 2 is 6. So Again, we found three really easy answers instead of taking three different limits and doing this whole process a bunch of times, which would have been incredibly long, and in an exam time, you're not going to have any time to do this if you want to get the other questions done. Unless you're a really fast writer and really bright, but, I mean, if you're both of those things, then this method is definitely way more effective and preferred because it shows you have an understanding of how functions work. So that was limit review number two. This is the final limit review. We're going to start heading into quick derivatives soon, and the questions will get much harder and much more involved.